of Margot Pierre White's Kitchen Wars. Michelin starred chef Marco Pierre White is looking for Britain's top restaurant run by a couple. I'm in search of great couples who deliver great food with friendly service with a smile. If the chef is talented and the front of house efficient and they're a couple, it's a winning formula. When couples get it right, they get it really right. Marco is visiting cities all over the UK where the couples will have one chance to cook and serve their best dish. You've got 30 minutes to prove to me that you can cook. Absolutely, sir. Uh, uh, chef. No, Marco. Marco. Well, it's got to be the worst thing I think I've ever eaten. Boo. If I was a Michelin inspector, I would give you a star just on what I've eaten. They're cooking to win a place in Marco's Battle Kitchen. This will be one of the toughest services of your life. They'll compete against each other. Three restaurants under one roof. Anna, I need your help. Anna, Anna, Anna. Your bread looks like a decomposed beached whale. Tick tock. Tick tock. Where the couples will serve their best menu to 75 diners. Who comes back to me, eh? I've got time to be nice. In their bid to be the winner of Kitchen Wars. It's coming, it's coming. It's gone to pot, I'm afraid. This is war. is starting his search for the nation's finest restaurateur couples where his culinary journey began. We're in Leeds, my hometown. The streets behind me is where I grew up. The flagstones I'm standing on today, I used to walk on with my mother, with my father. The avenue to my right was masses of butcher shops, all the oxtails hanging, the tripe hanging, the pig's heads, sides of beef. My dad used to buy his meat from a man called Fred Drink. I used to fish with his son, uh, Anthony. Tony Drink? Yeah. Tony. yeah. Big Tony. Big Tony. It was so visually powerful for me. Maybe this is where my love for food started. Now Marco wants to find the next generation of chef and front of house teams. Hundreds applied, but only the best have been invited to cook for him. What I'm looking for is couples that work as a team. They're synchronized. They share the same dream. I've been in catering for over 30 years. And if I think of the great restaurants of this country, they were always run by couples. For the first round, Marco's commissioned a state-of-the-art kitchen truck. Kitted out with everything the competitors will need to cook and serve one dish in 30 minutes. What I'm hoping today, that they come to my truck and they can replicate what they show their clients in their restaurants day in, day out. So I'm very nervous to cook for him today. He's a very hard man to please. I notice he's holding a knife and um, <laughs> we should be treating him with, yeah. treat with the absolute respect. Obviously, I'm nervous. You guys, uh, three Michelin star chef. I've got most of his books. The guy's a legend. First to cook for Marco are John and Laura from acclaimed restaurant Venels in Massam, Yorkshire. I got up this morning and thought, why? <laughs> why have I done risotto? I'm cooking for a man that got three Michelin stars at the age of 33. He's half Italian and I'm doing risotto. This husband and wife team have run their own restaurant since 2005, but food wasn't always their first love. Laura's musically trained, but I think as time went on, she, she realised that, that, that there wasn't going to be a career path. And, and I, th I think it's what fair... What are you saying? I'm a rubbish musician. <laughs> Come through. Good morning. Good morning. morning, Marco. But things don't get off to the smoothest of starts. Marco, nice to meet you. Marco. Nice to meet you. Martin, you see? Marco. Hey, John. Marco. John. John. I'm, your John. Name. Yeah, yeah. I'm Marco, you're John. I am. <laughs> you're very confusing. We haven't even started yet. You've got 30 minutes. OK. John is cooking braised pork on a bed of buttered leeks with a pork foam and rhubarb jelly risotto. Do you like my jacket? Uh, love your jacket, yes. Yeah, yeah, I see you've got a nice warm coat on as well. In fact, before I start, I'm just going to go and warm myself up in the oven. Oh. <laughs> You're funny as well. But it's not John's sense of humour that pulls in the punters. We go to their restaurant a lot. Simple food, superb ingredients, superbly cooked. I've never seen anyone stir a risotto so quick in my life. I, I'm not going to let that burn, I'm sorry, but I'm going to stir so it and stir nervous. it and stir it. He's panicking, no, he thinks he might burn no, it. What do you think, Laura? <laughs> John and Laura 
a very strong couple. What I like about him, he dresses like a chef, he moves like a chef. I can see why he's got a bib gourmand and two rosettes AA. But the pressure of cooking for Marco can do strange things to even the most accomplished chef. Oh, that's gone. Oh, Quite clumsy in the kitchen, aren't you, chef? Oh, I am today. And I start getting silly when I'm nervous, so... Uh... John, concentrate. Good morning, Leeds. How are we? Good. But can John control his nerves and get the risotto perfect? Okie dokie. So do you like your rice al dente, or...? There's al dente and there's undercooked. I'm just going to just put a little bit more heat under it, just so that it's absolutely perfect when I serve it. Oh, I hope. Is that meant to be straight? Uh, yeah, fairly straight. I hope it eats better than it looks, Chef. Uh, OK. Just a little bit of buttered jus, and then I think that'll do us. You finished in half the time. Let's hope it's perfect. With 15 minutes to spare, John has prepared his dish of braised pork and risotto, and Marco has invited one of the crowd to dine with him. It is nice and jelly, isn't it? Very tasty, yeah. There's just that little bit of heat in it, Chef. Yeah. It starts to bring out the flavour, which is quite interesting. The risotto is undercooked. So not perfect, but have they shown Marco enough to win a place in the next round? John and Laura, you proved to me that you graft. You proved to me that you're organised. Your jelly, that little bit of heat into it, brought out the flavour. But you know something? You had all the time in the world and you rushed it. The presentation, I didn't like it. OK. Your risotto was undercooked. So that's why I'm sending you back to Massam. John really tried to pull out the stops for today, so maybe if he'd stuck a bit more to what he yeah. does yeah. back home, then we would have gone through. Coming up, Marco gets personal. It's got to be the colour of your hair, really. Not yours. No, no, I don't mind. So I can see that. <laughs> and his patience wears thin. You've run out of time. Yeah. Or should I say, time's had enough of you. Marco Pierre White is on a mission to find the best couple running a restaurant in the UK. It's mid-morning on day one of the trials in Leeds, and couples have travelled from all over the North East to serve their best dish. Next to try and impress Marco is a father and son-in-law team from Lincoln. Ivano and Alan run the old bakery and don't always see eye to eye. We do argue most of the time. We have our moments. You know, it happens. But it's not major. We never kill each other, never stab each other or things like that. Alan! Oh, come on! But can they get past Marco and remain on speaking terms? What's the dish you're cooking? Well, I'm cooking some pappardelle. Um, I like pappardelle with. I'm doing with the white duck ragu. The way we make the pappardelle is different from normal. You've got normal. 30 minutes to impress me. So, we Next can time start. is going. We can start. So tell me about your relationship. Who's the boss? I, I believe the person stood in the middle is the boss, which yeah. is my daughter. Would you say she's a referee? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. An arbitrator? Yeah. Without any doubt. Alan, tell me more. Is your dear daughter in the audience today? Unfortunately, somebody has to look after Ivano's uh, children. Then, so you're a grandfather? Nine, I am a grandfather. I know I look far too young, but I am Trust a Trust me, you don't. <laughs> As Ivano carefully works his pasta, front of house Alan starts fussing. Alan, what are you doing? Forget the chairs, do the table, Alan. You're not Forget the cleaner. Forget the chairs. <laughs> Ivano, you can see he's traditionally trained. He worked the pasta well. Alan, he's another story. He's got to up his game. With ten minutes to go, Ivano puts the finishing touches to his dish and Alan prepares for the tasting. Not quite hot enough, that plate, is it? Do you serve your food on cold plates, Alan? We do not serve food on cold plates, no. But just a day for me. Genius. Um, Don't worry about it. Black pepper. It's a good job this man knows what he's doing, isn't it? So I mixed up with olive oil, which makes all the difference. Ivano has finished his pappardelle pasta with a white duck ragu sauce topped with a poached egg. And Alan has set a table for two for Marco and a member of the crowd to taste the food. How's that? 
Mm. <laughs> nice textures, eh? Nice flavours. It's delicious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Zesty. Alan hopes a flawless service will win him some much-needed brownie points. Maybe a drop of Dutch courage will help. A little too lemony for me. Thank you. Alan, do your clients taste the wine? I usually let them taste the wine, yes, sir. But has Ivano's food compensated for Alan's unorthodox service? So is it important, but I was just a bit starstruck, so I didn't really concentrate on anything other than being sat down with my cup of wife and dinner. <laughs> Ivano, Alan, your papadelli, delicious. Thank you. The ragu, for me, a little bit too much lemon. A bit of zest, yeah. I know you can cook for 25, but can Grandad serve 25? You will be. Are you sure? For sure. Alan? I will, and I can. Ivano, I'm going to take you to London to join me in my final 12. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, Alan. You will be ready. Thank you. Alan and Ivano were the first to win a place in the next round, where the competition will get even tougher as they go head-to-head -head against other couples. Ivano cooks fantastic Italian food, and that's why I'm bringing them to London to join me in my final 12. Clearly, there were elements of the service which were simply not good enough, and they will have to improve dramatically. Fantastic! Halfway through the first day of the Leeds trials and everyone's chasing a place in the next round. He's scaring me with that knife, you know. But no matter how hard they try to win over Marco... 5.6. Wow, what are you trying to do, get me drunk? Do I drink that apple sauce? You can if you want. You like red wine? Half bottle or a full bottle? Full bottle. He's having none of it and sends them packing. You will not be joining me in London for my final 12. Maybe because most of them describe their cuisine under the all-encompassing banner of modern British. If I'm honest, I'm fed up with modern British. I keep on being told it's modern British and it confuses me. Perhaps boyfriend and girlfriend Tom Cockrell and Caitlin from Entropy in Leicester can do better. Even though they're also cooking, you guessed it, modern British. Maybe they can give me some clarity on what modern British means. Because I haven't got a clue. Cooking quite a straightforward dish, so hopefully uh, not too much can go wrong. Tom's doing steak and chips, which sounds straightforward, but his version is much more complex. So it's steak and chips with oysters and red wine sauce. Uh, that's right. I'm and gonna mushrooms. Make, I'm going to knock up a horseradish hollandaise as well if I can. Uh, <coughs> really? If I have time. Do you okay. think this is going to be like watching the Titanic sink? No, not good. Eh? Good. Mr. Cockerell, he likes lots of flavours. Hollandaise with horseradish. Red wine sauce with smoked oysters. The question is, will he finish in time? You have got ten minutes left. Well, the steak is cooked, the chips are cooking. We've got steak and chips. The table is set, but Tom still has to finish his side dishes and plate up. Is there anything I can do to help? Distract me. Distract <laughs> you? That's what he should be saying. Yeah, Distract so. Marco yeah. to keep him away from me. You've run out of time. Yeah. Or should I say, time's had enough of you. While Tom hasn't impressed Marco with his side of things, Caitlin's table is attracting some admirers. It looks as if you want to sit down there yeah. and have a nice meal in the glass of wine. So tell me, how long do you think you're going to take now? Uh, seconds, Marco, seconds. But seconds turn into minutes and Marco's patience has run out. Mr Cockrell, Caitlin, you knew the rules. Time has gone. I can't taste your food. I can't try your food. I've got to send you back to Leicestershire. I'm very sorry. I said at the start, it'd be like watching the Titanic sink, and I was right. Have a nice day. Safe journey home. That is really quite disappointing um, that we've gone through a huge amount of trouble with some fantastic food, some fantastic produce, and he's not even going to taste it, but he's missing out. Sometimes I'll close an eye. One, two, three minutes. But 10, 15 minutes, you know something? It's time to go. It's time to go home. Bye-bye, Mr Cockrell. It was nice meeting you.
At the end of a day of disappointing trials that included many variations of modern British cuisine, Marco pops up the road to look for something different. George and his son Sol run the only Greek restaurant in the Good Food Guide. Working with my dad uh, on a daily basis, it's, it's not an easy task, but uh, I enjoy it, and he teaches me a lot. Solus is a lovable person, people love him, but sometimes he's a bit lazy. Marco, how are you? It's nice to be in the house. Hi, sir. Hello, what's your name? Sol. Sol. So you're front of the house? Well, I'm the, I'm in the kitchen mainly. Are you in the kitchen full time? I'm not, I'm for the house. <laughs> you're front of the house. It's passed on yeah. the charms to me. What's this one? That's Enzique. Delicious. What I like is the flavours. They're authentic. I'll tell you what I'd like, though. I'd like you to take a bit of time off tomorrow, come into the centre, and if you can cook me your best dish in 30 minutes and impress me, I'll take you back to London. <laughs> the rules are very simple. If we impress him, we go to the next round. If we don't, we go back... Oh, he said back to Olive Tree, back to hell. <laughs> It's the second morning of the Leeds trials, and Marco is hoping the county of his birth can produce some real talent. Up next are Barrington and Eleanor from Caribbean restaurant Discovery Bay, and they're convinced they can go all the way. I think we're good enough to win as a team, definitely. We're top of our game, and we've got a better chance than anybody. We'll do what we've got to do, man, innit? Yeah. Front of house Eleanor is just 20 years old and is relatively new to the industry. Eleanor's father's my best mate, so I've known Eleanor from when she was born, and I thought, well, I'll give her an opportunity at Discovery Bay. And she's nervous about meeting Marco. When I've actually seen him in, like, real life, I was, like, scared. <laughs> Come on. You're going to be my next victims. And straight away, Marco sees something he doesn't like. Do you always use frozen mussels? From New Zealand. It's as a garnish. It's so I don't eat it? No, it's just to sit on top, just for the presentation. You've got 30 minutes to prove to me that you can cook. I'll give you one little bit of advice. Do not use that. I won't use that. I won't use that. Trust me, there's more chance of poisoning me than impressing me. Barrington's first job is to get started with his secret weapon, his homemade jerk paste. But he hasn't banked on Marco's meddling. Do you always work so messy? I'm just trying to go... Do you find your nerves minutes. make you peel it quicker? No, this is how I usually do it in the restaurant anyway. Yeah, but you're quicker since you're nervous, shaking that bit more. I'm not shaking. Meanwhile, Eleanor's gone a bit quiet. Are you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell? Eleanor, she's very young, out of her comfort zone. The eyelashes, what can I say? They're enormous. Halfway through their 30-minute trial, the pressure seems to be getting to Barrington. Is that burning I can smell, Barrington? Is your pan too hot, Barrington? You should turn that down. I think you should turn it down. There's enough heat in the pan. I should think you should turn it off for a second, Barrington. Barrington, turn it, take it off for a while. Take it off, take it off. Just get your flame right. Barrington, big flavours, quite clumsy. But you know something? I know a few clumsy chefs, but they cook great food. How long have you had your restaurant, Barrington? I've had it for five years. I saved up for over 20 years for the restaurant. I'm my own man, and I want my life in my own hands, and I think that's in why... In charge of your well. own destiny? Yeah, it is. Wow, Barrington, let's hope I like cabbage. With a minute to spare, Barrington plates up his dish of jerk cod on a bed of Savoy cabbage with a coconut cream sauce. Do you think it needs muscle now, Barrington? No. That's Are you sure? That's enough. Do you think it needs a rosemary? I think so, just to finish it off. Well, I don't. OK, thank you. OK, here we go. It's a nice big piece of cod. I want some of this skin first, so I want to taste the jerk. Your cabbage was a bit too creamy for me. I like the jerk. Eleanor. Yeah. You didn't tell me much about your restaurant. Is she strong enough? She's strong enough. Are you sure? I'm definite. I enjoyed it very much. And that's why I'm bringing you to London to join me in my final 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done. The food was so 
probably really tasty. It was on my case from the start, but I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. I've listened to what you said, and I'm going to speak a bit more. I'll see you in London. <laughs> I might not be so kind next time. All right, thank you. The final couple of the day are Greek restaurant owner George and his son Sol, who have had just a night to come up with their best dish. So what we've got here is tin tomatoes. There's your shrimps over there, frozen, not fresh. That's right, yes. And bought in cheese. You've got 30 minutes, George. Hey. George starts with his Greek-style special fried rice. Now, the secret of this dish is that it's got to be brown. It's got to be the colour of your hair, really. Not yours. Well, no, I dyed mine. So I can see okay. that. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty. <laughs> yeah. What are you laughing at? <laughs> you. Why? I don't know, you're funny. I'm glad you find me funny. You might not be finding me funny in 15 minutes. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> so you use water rather than stock? Well, I do that because of vegetarians in the olive tree. I mean, I know my sister-in-law's restaurant in Manchester. They did put uh, chicken stock in, they found it, a vegetarian found it. It's not very nice. The whole of Manchester now know that she feeds vegetarians chicken. Genius. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh, you're running out of time, George. I minute. could have driven back to your restaurant by the time you've cooked that. And to make matters worse, George hasn't cooked his prawns properly. You can't eat raw prawns. Turned into a disaster, George. We're there, almost ready, ready. You're out of time. Ready. The prawns have barely seen the heat, but Marco bravely jumps in. It's tasty. It's traditional. It's old-fashioned. It's full of flavour. You ran out of time. Your shrimps were undercooked. The presentation was basic. You know how to cook. But for a family, not for me in London. I'd like to say thank you for your time. Thank you, my girl. Follow your father's footsteps, you'll do well. Thank you. God bless. I don't know. Yeah, very disappointed, but uh, probably I was talking more than cooking. I, I'm proud of him, he did, he did, he did well. Um, obviously, the timing issues there, but, you know, these things happen. We'll see you next year. <laughs> Up, the search continues as Marco heads south to London, where he heats things up. Stressing my wife, Marco. You're stressing my that's wife. That's my job. That's my job. That's me. And cools things down. I don't do just handshakes. I do kisses. I never kiss on the first date, madam. <laughs> Marco has left his hometown of Leeds and is heading to London. London is the capital of gastronomy in Britain today. Food has never been so good. So the standards I'm expecting today must be very high. In the heart of London's West End, Marco's competition has attracted some of the best restaurants from miles around. Marco is uh, the, the godfather of modern cooking. I'm really nervous to cook for Marco today, but also it's an honor. You look dangerous with that knife. How can you say that, madam? <laughs> I've been swinging my knife for years. <laughs> And willing to go under the knife, a self-assured chef, Gavin Gregg, and his wife, Lucinda, from Seven Oaks in Kent. When somebody says to me, uh, what sort of food do you do, I say good. Salmon Valentine special, two fish and chips, please. What we put in the plate's nice and tasty. They don't want too much pumps. They want a little bit of skill and flair. I'll, I'll show a bit of that today. Beautiful chicken, lunch menu, enjoy. They believe their success is down to great teamwork, despite having very different characters. Lucinda's, you know, quite laid back, and whereas I'm full on, and that works well. Yeah, he's a bit nuts, but that's what I married. <laughs> this is my giant egg timer. You have 30 minutes to impress me and to feed me. In your own time. Okay. He loves his work, really confident, and I think he can go all the way. And Lucinda is fantastic. So tell me about yourselves. Uh, we've had our own restaurant now for 12 years. We now have um, two AA rosettes. So you've succeeded in impressing the AA? Yes. But I'm a little bit different to the AA. Yes. <laughs> have the Michelin been to see you? Not that I'm aware of, no. You said to me, do I want a Michelin star or a busy restaurant? I want a busy restaurant. 
the problem is you've all got to try and do the next exploding cream egg. And I, to, to be honest, I don't want to do exploding cream egg because how often are you going to eat there? You're going to eat there once in your life. What customers want is good food on a plate. That's the places that are busy. You must have about six minutes left, seven minutes left, I would have thought. Although Gavin still has to get both cuts of lamb ready, finish off his ratatouille and make courgette fritters, he doesn't call on wife Lucinda for help. He's very in control, your man, isn't he, Lucinda? Yes. He's hard working. Maybe a bit too hard. Maybe he should dispute the workload. Do you want to win this competition? Yes. I would say if you want to win it, you have to change your strategy if you qualify. With time nearly up, Gavin finally asks for help. Lucinda, can I get the other board, please? I think he's starting to panic. He's asking you to do something. What do you want me to do? Get me the other board, bring it over and set it in front of Mark, please. Okay. But is it too little, too late? Time up. <laughs> <laughs> Just outside the 30-minute time limit, Gavin plates up his dish of lamb. OK, allow me to serve you. Thank you. So this is some of the braised shoulder, and I want you to be very honest with me. But is their food and service good enough for Marco to forgive Gavin's poor timekeeping? I think he's done a very good job. The flavours are beautiful. I like my lamb pink, but I also like slow-roasted lamb, and sometimes you don't get the combination of the two on a board. I think if I were passing this couple's restaurant, I'd definitely pop in and enjoy the meal. I don't have to tell you. You run out of time. Up to a certain extent, you dominated the show. Had you allowed Lucinda to help you, you may have finished in time. I should really be sending you home now. But because I liked your food, and it's the best food that I've had today, I'm going to put you through to the final 12. Take one bit of advice from me. Simplify everything. Thank you very much. Well done. Thank you. Knackered now. I need to go to bed. But I think for next time we'll learn a bit more. And Lucinda learns from that, and I've learned from that. The boy can cook. And he can cook really well. Oh, well done. Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Cheers. Halfway through day one of the London trials, and Marco is still hoping to find something different. We have a specialty in seafood, and we have um, an international flair with a little bit of an emphasis on African food. Halibut Restaurant in Buckingham consists of best friends Italian chef Massimo and front of house Zakima. We work in together well, and uh, of course, sometimes we have some argue, but this is a part of the job. Very nice to meet you. I don't do just handshakes, I do kisses. I never kiss on the first date, madam. <laughs> so I'm told this is African seafood cuisine. We do lots of different things at Halibut because, of course, seafood is our specialty. Smells nice. And West Smells Africa, delicious. It's beautiful. It's fragrant. There's some lovely ingredients in there. It's so unique. You would not find this dish or the things that we do at the restaurant anywhere else. I've never had African seafood cuisine. It sounds delicious. It sounds like it's full of flavour. You're a great double act, you two. You know that. I say I'm the Naomi Campbell of the kitchen. Did so. you create that strap line? <laughs> She's oh. a complete diva. In actual fact, it runs in the family. So I feel quite sorry for Massimo sometimes because he's, he's like a member of the family. Luckily, no mobile phones have hit him on the head as of yet. But on closer inspection, Marco notices something a little fishy. It's amazing. You don't communicate with each other, do you? It's like via osmosis. We know what we're thinking. We're like one person. Do you have a set menu? We do indeed, yes, well, That's absolutely. why you don't need to talk, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but that I set mean, menu does They change. just sit down and they eat, they eat what they're given. Okay, here. Bit of rice. Massimo plates up his dish of pan-fried halibut and jollof rice with plenty of time to spare. Very nice. Really good. Do you know something? Zucchima, Massimo, the food you cooked me was full of flavour. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You may not understand my logic, but I'm not going to include you into the last 12. But I know you will not be able to cope with the final because of the way you cook. I'm sorry. It's OK. Their restaurant is a set menu every night, so it's easy. Massimo is a beautiful cook. He's got a nice touch, but he can't cope with volume. 
We're doing this every day in our restaurant. We have 25, 30 people. No problem at all. Although that fish restaurant didn't make the grade, Marco's left the truck to check out one that might. And the same rules apply. You've got 30 minutes. It's time now to impress me. Fish Club is run by best friends head chef James and front of house Steve. Went to school together, we travelled together to Australia for a year or so. Um, I think we come back from Australia, moved in together, uh, and then we started the business together. James had an accident when he was a boy that affected his voice, but it hasn't held him back in his kitchen career. You have to deal with what you're dealt with, and it certainly hasn't injured me. Uh, and people always respect my voice and respect what I ask of them. They're preparing a fish feast for Marco, and James starts on the oven-roasted hake and then gets busy with his razor clams. You're sweating, Chef. I know. You're not going to put those hot razor clams onto that cold plate and those cold shells, are you? No, I'm not, Chef. You're going to warm them up? I am, yes. Yes, good. That's what I like to see. Could you cook for 25 people? Very much so. Are you sure? Yeah. By yourself? And they think their approach deserves respect. We worked very hard over the last seven years to get where we are, and for him to recognise what we're doing, it would just be terrific. Perfectly cooked, the salsa verde with a little lemon juice, and the juice is delicious. Okay, chef. And next, the oven roasted hake with herb infused oil gets a once over. That's a lovely large piece of hake. And I like the fact that it's pink on the bone. You cook well, chef. But everything we're doing here really was just trying to get in really fresh fish and let the, let the food do the talking. So what you're saying is, if you came to join me in my final 12, you'd be stumped. I think we'd be stumped. Because we're cooking meat as well. James is a very capable butcher. Are you really, chef? I am, yes. You've shown me a selection of dishes, which gives me great insight into who you are. I like you, I buy into your philosophy, And that's why you're coming with me, and I'm not leaving you in Clapham. Fantastic. We won't let you down. Well done, James. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Any ingredients that we're given, I think we can turn them into something fantastic. I believe I can definitely serve with a smile and a bit of charm, so, yeah, I think we should be all right. James proved to me that he's competent at the stove. I know there's more within him. Restaurants can be stressful places to work, they can also be places where love blossoms, as is the case for the next two couples. Hello there. Head chef Julia and front of house John of the Leathern Bottle restaurant near Reading met when John responded to an advert for a sous chef. You gave John a job, yes, yes. and then you made him your husband. <laughs> Genius. Although John started out in the kitchen under head chef Julia, he now concentrates on the front of house. We met as uh, chefs working together in the kitchen and then we became involved and got married. And now we're a husband and wife team. But running a successful restaurant doesn't leave a lot of spare time, as James and Sarah from the Ebury in London know only too well. Very good, I have a little rumour that you're getting married. Yeah, we've got a date booked the 1st of September. He told me he'd leave me if I didn't book the date, so um, I had to get my, myself into gear. September the 1st, uh, we're going home, so the bride always goes home for the wedding, so, uh, yeah. What do you want to say about that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the date's still changeable, but <laughs> When you're running a busy restaurant, there's very little opportunity for romance. You don't even want to know how he proposed to me. On one knee? Absolutely not. He was in the kitchen chopping on one side and I had my back to him chopping on the other. What I said was I was thinking of taking a wife, so I said, Chef, would you fancy the job? I don't, you know what I got? I just got a snort. <laughs> but ultimately, there always has to be one person who's the boss. He wears the trousers and I tell him which ones to wear. I see you started out being henpecked. And now you're a happy husband. No, I had that wrong. I thought I was henpecked. And then I was told that I wasn't. No, you're not. You're a happy husband. Yes, I know. I was told. It's nice watching you work together. James, you've got about a minute and a half left. Right. No more talking now. Bit of garnish, bit of sweet chili jam. Doing one plate, I'll go for that. Ooh, Julia. Look at that. Stressing my wife's mark. You're stressing my That's wife. That's my job. That's my job. That's mean. Move, 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 Jimmy, move. Tick, 
Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Carving now. Just within the time, James has cooked a char-grilled Cumbrian veal chop with sage and quinoa salad. And Julia has prepared a fillet of wild sea bass and a crab and pear risotto with lobster butter. But have either of these loved-up couples done enough to impress Marco? It would mean a huge amount to us to get through to the next stage, to be able to cook a three-course meal, and this is a real opportunity for us to show what we can do. Marco is uh, the, the godfather of modern cooking. I don't think we're, we're wow him. But they've of course got something. we're going to wow him. And, uh, and <laughs> perhaps you will. I don't know. I'm, I'm not quite so confident. We can win this. We're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed the way you work together. Thank you so much. Thank you. What it says on your menu, I ignore. He's not a hempex. <laughs> you might find it's the other way around. She supports you very well. But that's all by the by. The lunch you cooked me today was without doubt delicious. I really enjoyed it. You'll be joining my final 12. <laughs> I'm really quite stunned, but um, over the moon, absolutely chuffed to bits. You came onto this competition to win it, didn't you? Yes. And what have you shown me? You've shown me a perfectly cooked veal chop. I like that. And what I'm going to say is that you will be joining me in the final with the 12 couples. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you are. And congratulations you. on your marriage as well. <laughs> it's lovely to um, be doing this together and achieving this together. Um, and now we've got to go away and, and work harder. They were cooking for one today. Next time, they're cooking for 25. But let's not forget, I'll be cracking the whip, not shaking my knife. Coming up, the temperature rises on the last day of the London trials. Impress the crowd. And Marco hits the streets. There's a lot of grapes on there, isn't there? It's starting to turn into a dog's dinner. You can normally give me a spoon. Oh, you're not doing very well, you boys. You're almost falling at the first. It's the final day of the London trials, and Marco has already filled six of the 12 places in the next round. Today, lots of couples consisting of best friends are competing, like Chef Jamie and front of house Ellis from the Palmerston in South East London. Well, we met in school 25 yeah, years 25 ago. Yeah, 25 years ago. Sat in English together. New boys in the town. New so, boys, yeah. yeah. We sort of looked after each other. We stayed in touch all that time. Best mates, really. Yeah. Best mates. The Palmerston is a, what they people call a gastro pub these days, I suppose. But basically, we're I don't good. like that name. Nor do I. Horrible it makes name. me think of gastroenteritis. Horrible. Which we don't give to anybody. You sure? Thank you. On a good day. Impress the crowd. Yeah, well, it's all for show, isn't it? So this is where I'm starting to shake now, look. This is the old hand shaking. Just in the, the nick of time, Chef. Thank you, Chef. But Marco doesn't miss a thing. That little bit of sand in the spinach it's just annoying, isn't it? adds to the texture. Just a <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to deliberate. Okay. I'm going to think about it. He delays his decision because he wants to see the other couples cook. So fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. And there are plenty more hopefuls waiting. Kaloshi Curry House from Gloucestershire add a cocktail to accompany their dish. Delicious. Portobello Pizzeria from West London try singing with their supper. So they're coming back for the music or the food? I think for the food, first of all. But neither make the grade. It shouldn't be the cocktail that makes the curry, in my opinion. Can best friend Sam and Hamza from El Cantara in Soho fare any better? Is he calm in the kitchen? No, absolutely <laughs> not. Has uh, he not? Because he shouts and swears and screams, and he's got a nickname, uh, Gordon Hamsey. <laughs> Shit in hell. We starting to swear. Oh, yeah. yeah that's because he's feeling <laughs> the Fresh pressure now, you know. Marco likes them, but not enough to make a decision just yet. You served your pastilla. It was tepid. So you're not out yet, but you are hanging in the balance. So they also go into Marco's maybe category. 
Lastly, the Duquesne from Essex try pairing lamb with something unexpected. The Coca-Cola works on a double level with um, adding an enzyme which breaks down the, the animal protein a little bit, makes it a little bit more tender. But their effort goes flat. Unfortunately, you're not going to make the last 12. The London trials are over, but before Marco moves on, he has to make a decision about the two restaurants he wasn't sure about. So he's come to the Palmerston in South East London to take a closer look. Jamie Ellis. Oh, how, how are, are you, boys? Marco, how are we? Good afternoon. Ellis, how Marco how liked how elements of Jamie's cooking, but wants to see how they perform in their own kitchen. You have 30 minutes to prepare me my lunch. To start, Marco's chosen the fish soup. Thank you very much. It's a bit coarse as the old cheese, isn't it? You prefer it finely grated? Mm, so it melts. Okay. And for Maine, the calves liver. Okay, it's hot place, sir. Tell me about that. Uh, okay. There's a lot of grapes on there, isn't there? Cool. Well, I see them before I see the liver. What's these other bits with it? Swede. Has being on their home turf helped them, or have Jamie and Ellis scored an own goal? The soup de poisson, you've made a fantastic stock. It's delicious. Your liver, lovely quality, beautifully cooked. But the pasty and whatever you'd put on top really spoiled it, and the Swede wasn't great. The more I ate the dish, the more it became one. I didn't really enjoy that. It started to turn into a dog's dinner. This one has let you down. And for that reason, you won't be joining me in my final 12. OK. I'm okay. very sorry. God bless. Cheers. Thank Bye you. Bye-bye. Yeah. That's not bad. It's well, I say, well, at the moment, just uh, move on, look after our customers as we always do, and give them the food that we always serve. And uh, we'll try and learn from this and uh, get better and better. Less than 10 miles away, Marco drops in on Sam and Hamza from the Moroccan-Spanish fusion restaurant El Cantara. Chef Marco, how are you? How are you? Good, well, good. Not too bad. The last time I saw you boys yeah. was round the corner. It wasn't far from In me. my truck. Yeah. <laughs> but today, I've come to see whether you can really cook. Are you nervous? No. I good. want home, home ground now. <laughs> But this time, Marco wants four dishes comprising both Spanish and Moroccan cuisine in 30 minutes. One pastilla chicken, one paella valenciana. And the first three are all Moroccan classics. Here we have chicken pastilla. And don't you normally give me a spoon? Oh, you're not doing very well, you boys. You're almost falling out the first. Got the side sauce ready. OK, why have you even got a big plate, a big tray, man? It's fine. You can carry it all. Yeah. Interesting, he serves hot liquid in a cold dish, so therefore it's lost its heat, but it tastes delicious. Can we have some more couscous, please? Chef, some yeah. more couscous, please. Ah, my tagine. Ma tagine. It smells delicious. And the fourth is a Spanish paella. I've never had a good paella in England. This troubles me. Your mussels are overcooked. Your prawns are poor quality. Your rice has been turned into a pudding. The pastilla with the chicken was delicious. Thank you, chef. The lamb tagine, again, delicious. So therefore, you will be joining me in my final 12 <laughs> because of the first three dishes you gave me. Well done. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I know that the quality is going to be high and we're going to be up against other very good people. So uh, it's going to be tough. A few tweaks on my menu. I'll probably change him. Someone <laughs> a bit more charming. And then I think that's it. And Marco has one last bit of advice for Chef Hamza and his family. You should always stick to Moroccan. That's it. The pastilla, the tagine, the marguez, delicious. The paella, disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Marco is halfway through his search for the best couple in the UK running a restaurant. He's scoured half the country and put seven couples through. Now only five places remain. Next week on Kitchen Wars, Marco's in Liverpool. <laughs> 
and Cardiff. Searching for the best food. That is going to be the worst thing I think I've ever eaten. You have to spend more time in Wales then. The clock keeps on ticking. You've run out of time. I thought. Maybe it's because he's serving all the other customers, Michael. And Marco meets his match. You're obviously the boss. You know strong women, don't you, Marco? <laughs> Let's not get into that. <laughs> Fantastic. And Marco Pierre White's search continues next Thursday at 8 here on Channel 5. Next tonight, their first full day in the house. Enough time to rub each other and you right up the wrong way. How are things under the all-seeing eye of Big Brother? Stay with us.